But first, to Alabama and next Tuesday's special election for a U.S. Senate seat. This is the race whose trajectory turned after nine women came forward to accuse Republican candidate Roy Moore of sexual misconduct, many when they were teenagers and he was in his 30s. One of those women, Beverly Nelson, appeared today with attorney Gloria Allred. Nelson said nearly a month ago that Moore groped and assaulted her when she was 16 and that he had written a message in her high school yearbook just days before. Today, Nelson and Allred discussed the yearbook and reaction to Nelson's allegation. According to forensic handwriting and document examiner Arthur T. Anthony, the signature and the handwritten notation above the signature were prepared by Roy Moore. Since I spoke about my experience with Roy Moore when I was only 16 years old, I have been the target of threats and lies. A talk radio host said that I should be put in the town square and stoned, and he said he wanted to be the first to throw the largest stone at me. Someone even sent me a photo of a casket, which I took as a threat. As a result, I have had to live behind triple locked doors, tinted windows. I've had to even have security accompany me when I went to a doctor's appointment. Roy Moore's campaign pushed back within hours. In a press conference, Moore's lawyer maintained his client's innocence. He said Moore has suffered too. And I remember the day that the accusations were made. I didn't get to see Judge Moore in person, but I saw him on TV. He came out of church. He was with his wife and he was with his mom. And I'll never forget the look on his mom's face when they walked out. So this has been horrible. It's been absolutely horrible for Judge Moore, his wife, his mom, his daughter, his sons, his granddaughters, his friends, his church members, people across the state of Alabama that have known him for so long. Here now to talk about all of this is Robert Costa, reporter for the Washington Post and, of course, host of PBS's Washington Week. Robert was in Alabama reporting this week. So, Robert, uh, this back and forth between uh, these women who've made these accusations and the Moore campaign is getting so much attention here in Washington and nationally. But how much talk is there about it in Alabama? On the ground in Alabama, Judy, it's a bit of a different scene in the sense that Alabama voters I spoke to on the ground over the last four days say this race is not about the, the latest development in a yearbook or what the, an accuser of Roy Moore has said uh, today or yesterday. It's about identity. It's about the identity of the state, uh, Alabama's past versus Alabama's future, as much as it is a Democrat versus Republican. And this is one of the tightest races I've seen, even in the Deep South. Well, what does it look like to you? Are there, are you? You're not saying these women's allegations have no effect on the campaign, are you? Oh, no. These, these are credible allegations from nine women, and they have rocked Alabama politics. Uh, and they're having an effect on the race because they're making many Republican voters, suburban Republican voters in Mobile and Birmingham and Huntsville, question their own partisan affiliations. And when I was covering Doug Jones, the Democrat on the ground, he was really courting them, reaching out to them and saying, can the state survive with its business environment, with bringing big companies in, if we have Roy Moore as U.S. Senator? You started to talk, Robert, about the messages from both of the campaigns. What are they saying to voters in these final days before the election? Roy Moore, he's revving up the base. He's hoping to hear some more support from President Trump tonight. The president will be in Pensacola, Florida. The Democrats are looking for African-American Democrats in urban areas to turn out in strong numbers. It's a special election, so they, they want to make sure turnout is not as it usually is in special elections, historically low. They also are trying to court those Republican voters, get them to switch parties. The biggest hang-up for Doug Jones, his position on abortion, he supports abortion rights. And in a state like Alabama, uh, that's a difficult hurdle for some voters to clear on the conservative side. So you mentioned President Trump. As you said, he's right across the border uh, tonight. Uh, it, how much of an effect is he having on this race? It, it's a major effect because you saw President Trump for a few weeks after the allegations first surfaced. He was taking a wait-and-see approach, but now he has a full-throated endorsement 
of Roy Moore. And for Republican voters in Alabama who are looking for a cue from the White House, they sure got it. He's only a few miles away in the panhandle of Florida tonight. Those Republican officials in Alabama that I've spoken to, they're counting on Trump voters to turn out. They may not love Roy Moore. They may have some questions about his character, but they believe that if they vote for Moore, they can support the Trump agenda. That's the way Republicans like Governor Kay Ivey believe Roy Moore can win. You know, Robert, this election is getting so much attention, we almost have to remind ourselves that it's a special election to replace uh, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, who, of course, stepped down uh, to go to, uh, to become attorney general. Is it getting that much attention from voters? Is there expected to be a high turnout? I went to diner after diner, to different community centers and churches. This race, Judy, I would say verges, uh, it's almost on the brink of contesting Alabama football at this time of year as being a major topic in the state. Everybody's talking about it because they believe it's bigger uh, than R versus D. This is about how is Alabama going to see itself? How is the country going to see Alabama? Robert Costa, and we'll be hearing much more from you a little bit later on Washington Week. Thank you. Thank you.